The next morning, before school, Beaver caught me alone in the hallway. He's usually 20 minutes late to homeroom. Early Beaver wasn't a good sign. I could see a lump on this. I could see a lump the size of a golf ball on top of his head. The guy was angry. Granted, Beaver Vanderkolf is always angry, but today he was extra super mega angry at me. At me. Fine. Morning we're having. Isn't it, Sam? He was said, glancing around for adults. Of course, whenever you needed them, they weren't there. Sam, oh no, you have made a large confusion, I said, trying to do my best ex- accent. I am his identical cousin, Jarmo, from Finland. That's not going to work a second time, said Beefer. He grabbed me by the arm and yanked me once more into the boys, into the second floor boys' bathroom. Someone had right in the trash can Beefer punched, but it still bore the dent from his clear belt karate demonstrations. I worried that my face would soon have a, soon have a sim, similar dent. First off, said Beefer, holding me by the collar, you tell anybody what happened that I got KO'd by a gerbil, you're dead. I didn't see any gerbil, I said, technically true. Anybody asks, I was minding my business, vandalizing the school, when those dumb planets randomly fell on my head. Got it? Sure, just an accident, just an innocent act of vandalism, I said. Could have happened to anyone, second beeper said. When I find Martha Jr., she's going to pay. Hey, come on, Beefer, I said. You don't need to worry about a hamster source Rex. He's just an animal. He didn't. I've seen the little posters you drew. I know you love that rodent, but I live by a very simple code, Sam. That code is, nobody drops a homemade, homemade solar system on Beefer Vanderkoff and gets away with it. Nobody. I admire how specific your code is, I said, but there's really no need to. Enough gum flapping, he said, gripping my collar tighter. I want to tell you my special surprise. A Caribbean vacation? Nope, but it does involve water, said Beefer with a yellow smile. He kicked open the door to one of the bathroom stalls. You're familiar with the regular old swirly, of course. I sighed. Sure thing, where you... F- sure, the thing where you flush the toilet and stick my head in it? A swirly is pretty awful. But probably not as bad as getting punched in the f- pun, getting my face punched in. When you're me, unfortunately, you have to rank these, these things. See, that's just the problem. Beefer said, put, putting his arms around me. You're used to swirlies, and that means we need something new. Last night I was lying in bed and rubbing his, and rubbing this giant painful bump on my head. I started thinking, how can I make a swirly to the next level? How can I leave my own mark on a classic? You're considering your bullying legend legacy, I said. Great. That's when I came up with what I call the Beefer Kiefer Beefer Vanderkoff Ultra Swirly or the B Ki Kibiva Ui. Swear, sweet, for short. Kibi va ui sui. I said that really rolls off the tongue. Tongue. The ki the kibi va ui sui is just the a re, like the regular swari said Beefer, except for one important innovation. Beefer reached into his pocket and pulled out twenty a twenty four ounce bag of Uncle Puckett's powdered pancake mix a smile court production he tore open the bag and flushed the toilet and dumped the powder in it formed a swirly bead sludge in the bowl i frowned it's too late for you just to punch me we'll get to that said b for first but first your ki ba va ui suu and with that he flipped me upside down Please, Beefer, I have a very sensitive scalp. Beefer was unmoved. He dunked my head into the swirling goop. When he pulled me out, I was covered down to my shoulders in sticky toilet made pancake batter. Well, said Beefer. He was waiting for his first customer review. It's awful, I said, wiping the stuff off my eyes. Fantastic, I sa- said Beefer. And with that, he slug- slugged me in the gut, knocking the wind out of me. It's only a matter of time before I find Martha Jr. 
he said, as he t turned to leave, I'm going to take him home and feed him to my pet boa constrictor. He's a dead gerbil walking. I thought of seven or eight snappy comebacks, but neglected to share them. I sure didn't want another ki ba vu vu e sui. And so I spent the next 15 minutes trying to clean off pancake batter in the sink. It doesn't come out as easily as you think. In fact, while I was washing my face, my swirly hair hardened into a crusty, a weird crusty spike. No matter how much I tried to flatten it, the shape kept performing. The bell rang and I had to go to the class looking like a, the world's saddest unicorn. Very avant-garde hairstyle, said Sam said Mr. Copeland. Thanks, I said, taking my seat. Not a compliment, said Mr. Copeland. He waited a moment until everyone was settled. All right, kids, some of you have noticed that our classroom model of our solar system is missing. That's because of an incident that happened after school. He squinted at Beefer, who pretended not to pay attention by leafing through the October issue of Putstall, the horror movie effect, effects magazine. Just to restate the just to restate the obvious, none of you should be in the classroom unattended," said Mr. Copeland, as he confiscated Beefer's magazine. "Got it? Yes, Mr. Copeland." We all said in unison. Tina Gomez raised her hand. "What is it?" Mr. Copeland said. "I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Copeland. First, we lose our class hamster. Now, our solar system model," she said, shaking her head dramatically. What tragedy is next? Tina, we had a class hamster for less than 10 minutes, said Mr. Copeland. We should really get some snails to replace that, said Wilbur Weber. Some more snails is the solution to every problem, Weber. Wilbur, Mr. Copeland, I have a theory, said Martha Cherry, smiling in a way that she must have thought was sweetly. Great, here we go, said Mr. Copeland with a sigh. It may sound fanatic, but perhaps the two events were connected in some way, she said. I mean, Hamster Source Rex missing dis mysterious disappearance and the subsequent destruction of the solar system model, isn't it? Beefer was now glaring at me with a raw hatred in his eyes. I could see the, l I could see the lump on his head throbbing. I shrugged frantically and indicated that I hadn't told anyone. He'd been KO'd by a gerbil. Sorry, no mysterious. Sorry, no mystery here, Martha. He said, Mr. Copeland. Kiefer was messing with the solar system, and then it fell on his head. He enjoys spending time in the classroom so much. Principal Truett has given him after-school detention every Monday for the foreseeable Beefer stretched and yawned to indicate boredom. Mr. Copeland gritted his teeth. So Beefer and I were the only ones who knew the real truth, despite his warnings. I had to tell somebody I still had a hamster to find, and I figured out two. And I figured two heads were better than one. So at lunch, I quickly recounted the solar system incident to the only person I could trust, Dylan D'Amato. Whoa, Beefer Vanderkoff defeated by a hamster source Rex. He said Dylan, you after listening to the whole story. Sam, does it bother you that you're not as tough as a hamster? A little, I said. Dylan and I had spent been best friends since kindergarten since the first week of preschool. When I got an empty sand pail stuck on my head, and she was the only kid strong enough to yank it off. We were plenty different. She made fun of me a lot. But when anybody else did, she got furious. Always, I always nodded politely when she went on and on about disc golf. I never laughed when she tried to draw stuff, even though every one of her pictures unvariably ended up looking like a sweet potato with googly eyes. You should just stand up to be fair, said Dylan. Uh, huh? I said. And you'll cover the cost of my facial reconstruction surgery. Nah, it's not like that, I said Dylan. Remember in second grade when you were scared to take a bath because you thought lobsters was going to 
because you thought a lobster was going to come up the drain. I sighed. Yes, I remember. That's what Beefer is. An imaginary brain lobster. I mean, if you're not afraid of him, then he doesn't have any power over you. What? Yes, he does. The power to punch me and stick me in a pancake toilet is probably some other worse stuff that I haven't even thought of yet. I know, but you're not afraid of getting punched. But I am afraid. It, uh, I said, it hurts a lot. Okay, fine. Look, if you want me to to kick, if you want me to, I can kick his butt on your behalf. I've got some free time this afternoon. She demonstrated a little shadow boxing. You can fight my bat. You can't fight my battles for me, Dylan's. I'm going to handle this one, the good old fashioned Sam Dibbs way, with plenty of cowardness and a dash of hiding. I said. Anyways, forget about Beefer. I'm just glad Hamster Source Rex is okay. You sure love that weird hamster, huh? As much as you love disc golf. Whoa, said Dylan, nodding with for newfound respect. That's a lot. I told her about seeing Hamster Source Rex flee into the gymnasium. Living in Coach Wakey's office? Huh? I sure hope the little dude likes the smell of weight gainers and feet said Dylan. We should tell Mr. Copeland. What? No way. I said Beefer is out for revenge if Hamster Soros Rex goes back into the cage in our classroom. He'll be a sitting duck. Beefer will get him for sure. For sure. In fact, now I have to find Hamster Soros Rex before Beefer does. Maybe during gym class, you can figure out a way back to sneak into Weeki's into Weeki's office and rescue him. She shrugged. Good thinking, I said. Just promise me you won't tell anybody about any of this, okay? Dylan laughed. Sam, when have I ever spilled a secret? I cocked my head. What about the time you let the it slip that my mom called you, me bunny butt? Sorry about that, she said. I mean, it's not the worst nickname. I frowned. Just keep it quiet, all right? Keep what quiet, said Martha Cherry. She happened to... She, happen, she appeared out of nowhere like some sort of honor student ghost nothing i said i mean uh i was just telling dylan to keep it quiet because she plays her uh trombone we play together in a band it's dylan on trombone and me on a washboard she said so dylan right as right i said a classic trombone and washboard duo if she plays too loud it drowns me out i smiled in panty Panamined a wicked air washboard solo. Whoa, Sam, said Martha. I never, I knew you were really creative. I, creative ever since I, you drew that beautiful portrait of me last year. You know me, you know, you mean the caricature, she said, where Sam made your nose look like an overripe beet, said Dylan. In disbelief. Huh? Uh-huh. I love beats, said Martha. So what's the name of your band? The Dylan D'Amato Experience, said Dylan, crossing her arms and squinting at her. Very hip. You probably won't get it. Is that why you have a flamboyant new rock and roll hairstyle, said Martha. She was looking at my crusty pancake hair horn. Uh-huh. I said fluffing it up a little pretty edgy huh you look like a narwhal said martha is my favorite northern latitude sea animals i gave her a thumbs up and dylan frowned her eyes forward and dylan rolled her eyes forward maybe five times anyway i wanted to share some information with you sam ever since ever since you seem to concern about the fate of our beloved class pet martha held up one of my Hamster Source Rex posters. Perhaps you should even be telling, I shouldn't even be telling you. This is part of an ongoing Hamster Monitor investigation. Hamster Monitor isn't a real thing, said Dylan. You know that, right? Martha held up her ID lanyard as proof. Like I said earlier, I think the solar system falling on Hamster Source Rex disappearing are related.
what I said as I said with a forced I pitched laugh. No way. If Martha connected the dots, Beefer would assume I told her, then he would pound me. Then he would pound me. I was able to recover the piece of string from the ceiling, said Martha. She held it up. I examined it and frayed the frayed end under the microscope in the science lab. It appeared to have been gnawed. What if Hamster's Rex really did it? Come on, I said, panicking. You're joking. Ha <laughs> ha. You're so funny, Martha. Did anyone ever tell you that? She smiled. No, when people complimented her. Me, it's usually when my, it's usually on my above average intelligence. intelligence. My pun, oh my God. punticality, or my committed, or my commitment to flossing. Oh, please, muttered, oh, please, muttered Dylan. Well, personally, I think Hamstersaurus Rex is gone for good, I said, probably just as well as, well, I think to think of him out there in the wilderness somewhere. Maybe he joined a pack of wild hamsters running around free across the tundra. No, said Martha. I have reason to believe that Hamstersaurus Rex is still living somewhere within the school. In fact, I believe his, I know his approximate location. Where? I'm not... I'm not a liberty to disclose that information, said Martha. Come on, you have no idea where he is, said Dylan. Do too, said Martha. He's in the boiler room. Wrong, said Dylan. What was Dylan doing? I tried to catch her eye, but she was, but she ignored me. That's pretty unlikely, Martha said, because I've never been wrong before. Dylan snapped. Oh, come on, the boiler room. The boiler room, that's all the way across. The other side of the school from the gym. So you think Hamster Taurus Rex is in the gym, said Martha. She already had her notebook out and was scribbling something. I turned to stare at Dylan. She had both hands cupped over her mouth. I mean, uh, who knows where? Who knows, said Dylan quite quietly. He could be in the library. I have all I need for now, said Martha, smiling as she turned away. Thanks, Dylan.